Good morning and welcome to Searching Through Scripture. I'm Father Terry from St. David's Anglican Church in Welland, Ontario. I'm thrilled that you could be with us again this morning as we search through Scripture and discuss various passages uh, that help us along in our daily lives as we witness the power of God's Word each and every day. Uh, you know, I was thinking this week about how fortunate we are to live in a time and a place where uh, information is readily available to us. Uh, how many times, you know, I was listening to uh, a radio show the other day where uh, parents were talking about helping their children with homework and many of them were saying, you know, uh, how is it that we would be able to help our children do their homework, our elementary school children do their homework without the aid of Google. And I started thinking about information and the, the reliability of information. And it got me thinking about today's gospel reading from St. Mark, the one from chapter one, verses 21 to 28. And how Mark, St. Mark in describing Jesus uh, in the way the which Jesus uh, delivers his message in the synagogue, the way he presents his information, he uses this term speaking with authority. So as he spoke to those who were in the synagogue, they said to one another, how is it that he speaks with such authority? Well, I think it's really important for us as Christians to think about what the word authority means here. You know, we are inundated each and every day by messages, by media, by news, uh, all kinds of messaging coming to us. And sometimes we're called to sift through that and find the truth. How do we know? How do we actually know what is uh, really uh, information that is true, that comes from a source whose authority we can trust? So let's read through uh, Mark, uh, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 21 to 28, and talk about what this means for us. So here we begin. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed. And they kept on asking one another, what is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, they obey him. And once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. In this particular gospel passage, what we have are two things. One, that the people in the synagogue recognize that Jesus is able to speak to them in a way that they may have never heard before throughout their lives, that he spoke to them as one who had authority, and we assume here, given to him from God, that he was authentic in the way in which he preached and taught. The second thing that we see here in this gospel reading is that we have unclean spirits, the supernatural spirits uh, that surround us in life, uh, how they recognize Jesus and actually name him as Jesus of Nazareth. They know, and it's interesting that the Spirit says, I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Again, what comes out of this reading for me is, how do we know when we encounter the real thing? How do we know when the things that we encounter, the information that we gather, whether it's from news or radio or Google or Wikipedia or wherever it comes from, how do we know that we can trust it? 
What we are invited into in this first chapter of Mark in verses 21 to 28 is to consider who Jesus Christ really is. And because Jesus, as we know, is oftentimes referred to as the Word of God, then he is speaking to us with an authority and a truth that we can trust. So how does that then move us in our everyday lives? What is it that we are asked to do when reading this gospel message in order to understand and to get to know God better? I think what we can uh, take from this reading, or one of the things that we can take from this reading, is that we as Christians are called to inform our faith each and every day. And what are the ways in which we can do that? And perhaps uh, the greatest way of doing that is to pick up your Bibles each and every day, to read a passage, and think about the ways in which Holy Scriptures informs us about the presence, the love, and the value of Jesus Christ in our lives. As we read through the gospel messages, the stories of Jesus' ministry and life, we are enlightened by the Word of God to understand truly that we are being informed in a way that is real, in a way that speaks to us beyond uh, the things of this world, and but allows us to uh, get into relationship with God more closely. You see, if the revealed word, word of God is to come to us, it comes to us through Holy Scripture and understanding the power and presence of Jesus in the world each and every day. And it's important for us to engage in that kind of exploration through the, through the Scriptures as often as we can, as this will feed us and strengthen our relationship with God. So the next time you think about what is it that informs me, what is it that speaks to me with such authority, is it Google, is it uh, CTV, is it the CBC, what, where can I get information that is true and right and uh, completely um, I don't want to say perfect, but uh, that speaks to me with uh, the greatest amount of truth. And the answer to that may lie in the Bible, in Holy Scripture, because it is the way in which God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit speak to us uh, so that we may come to know him more fully and more perfectly and then live our lives in a way that radiates that knowledge that God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit live with us each and every day, empower us, surround us, and uh, bring us that love that can only come from the true source uh, of all things, the Creator, uh, God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, three in one, the Holy Trinity. May God bless you, keep you safe. I look forward to hearing and seeing your comments on our Facebook page. Uh, stay safe, and we'll meet again next week. Take care.